Hey there, the name's Jake. Just a guy trying to navigate the complicated terrain of life. But to understand where I am now, I need to take you back to the start. Picture this, a comfortable suburban life. My parents, my golden boy older brother Ryan, and me. I was the Pluto to his son, constantly in the shadows, distant and overlooked. Ryan was a local hero, captain of the football team, valedictorian, the works. But then there was Emily. Emily. With her infectious laughter that echoed through the summer air and eyes that whispered promises of home. We'd known each other since grade school, but it wasn't until our adolescent edges had been rounded out by life that we really saw each other. She became my haven in the shadowy existence that I led. One day, standing under the bleachers at a game where Ryan was predictably the star, she turned to me, her eyes locking with mine. I choose you, Jake. Not Ryan. You. The shock was real. The girl I'd pined for chose me over my golden brother. And with a Pokemon reference. The memory of that moment still feels like a shot of adrenaline. We were young, in love, and unstoppable. Late nights talking about our future became our norm. Wedding preparations and honeymoon plans replaced our school projects. The scent of happiness was intoxicating. I enlisted in the military to provide a better life for us. The call to serve my country was loud, and the steady income was attractive. Emily was unsure but supported my decision, because it was for us, our future. Life, however, threw a curveball. I returned from a tour to a glowing Emily and applause. We're gonna be parents, she exclaimed, her joy seeping into every word. But something was amiss. Unanswered calls whispered behind closed doors. An unfamiliar tension. Then I found it. A letter hidden away in Ryan's room, with Emily's handwriting. Her confession was a punch right to my gut. I was swallowed whole by the shadow I'd been living in. Every corner of my world crumbled. Feeling betrayed and hollow, I did what any man on the brink would do. I packed my bags and left. I left behind Emily, Ryan, and the illusion of a child that I'd been dreaming about. But life doesn't stop, and neither could I. If you need to know something about me... It's that I'm a fighter. Sure, I was knocked down, but I was far from out. So I picked myself up and started again. A new journey, a new chapter. And then the phone rang. Emily's voice pierced through the silence. Jake, I need you. I was flung back into the whirlwind I had escaped from. Ava was listening, her expression unreadable. Why the hell should we help her, Jake? Ava shot out, the raw anger in her voice mirroring the chaos in my heart. But something within me stirred. The sound of Emily's voice, the plea, it held me captive. We do this for the child, I found myself saying. Eva's eyes narrowed. Fine, but remember this, Jake. We're walking on thin ice. Her words echoed in the silent room, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that something, something big was coming. Ava's reaction to Emily's plea had not been expected. Instead of the hospitality I'd braced myself for, she'd said, We're doing this for Lily, not Emily. I stared at her my brow furrowing. Something was off about Ava, a shift I couldn't quite decipher. Emily's re-entry into our lives was an unsettling cocktail of nostalgia and heartbreak. Her essence was just as intoxicating as I remembered. We'd sit up late into the night, digging into the past, Lily, and inevitably, Ryan. Meanwhile, Ava was a shadow in our periphery. I need to take a little trip, she dropped one morning, her casual tone clashing with the weight of her words. I could only stare, puzzled as Ava left me alone into the brewing storm with Emily. Ryan didn't want Lily, Jake, Emily confessed one night, her voice barely above a whisper. I didn't know what to do. Her words nodded in my stomach, a strange mix of empathy and anger. This was a lot to process. Ava's absence felt like an echoing chasm growing wider each day. The woman I loved was drifting away into an abyss I couldn't touch. I felt like a protagonist in a surreal mix of movies, like I was living through the adrenaline-fueled tension of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the gut-wrenching suspense of Gone Girl, with a dash of the peculiar family dynamic of the Royal Tananabums. The irony wasn't lost on me. Jake, I've missed you, Emily admitted one day, her voice heavy with emotion. I was saved from responding by the piercing ring of my phone. Jake, it's Ava, came the cold, detached voice from the other end. I need to see you. But Ava, you left. I began only to be cut off by her clipped reply. I never left you, Jake. I'll explain. And with that, the line went dead. The mystery around Ava deepened, and suddenly Emily's unraveling secrets seemed to pale in comparison. I found myself staring at Emily, the woman who had torn my world apart 
and then at my phone, the lifeline to Ava, who seemed to be an enigma wrapped in a riddle. A cliffhanger in my own life, Ava's sudden reappearance held the promise of answers, or perhaps more questions. It was a scene from a suspense novel, and I was both the lead and the eager reader, waiting, breathless, to turn the page. A chill descended upon our cozy living room, now bearing more secrets than the central perk in Friends. Emily, embodying Monica's spirit, was desperately trying to reconstruct a life she'd shattered, while our innocent Lily was cast in the Joey role, oblivious to the drama unfolding. As for Ava and me, we were trapped in the perplexing dynamic of Rachel and Ross, forced on a break from normacy. Sometimes I would catch Emily, her gaze lost on the barren side of her bed. The guilt in her eyes mirrored the bitter climax but lacked the closure. The silence of our living room was shattered like glass when Ava suddenly declared, I'm visiting Ryan. My heart froze like a record stretched in mid-song. Why? I barely recognized my own voice, the single word echoing the turmoil within. Lily should be with her father, she answered, her gaze fixed on the floor, not daring to meet mine. It was the kind of scene that had viewers shouting at their TV screens. Don't believe her! She's got a scheme up her sleeve! But my life was not an episode of Game of Thrones. It was spiraling into uncharted territory. Watching Ava leave felt like observing a character in a movie. A character I thought I knew. But she was no longer just Ava, a woman who'd made me believe in love again. She was now Ava, intertwined with the ghosts of my past, and most shockingly, with Ryan. My eyes darted to Emily, our shared history intensifying the silent question. You know what this is about, right? She paled under my gaze, reminding me of a child caught in a lie. Finally, after a moment that felt like an eternity, she whispered, Ava was, is Ryan's therapist. My world tilted, the revelation hitting me like a punch in the gut. Ava knew Ryan? She'd known him all along? And I'd been completely oblivious? In this unfolding drama, I'd somehow become a character in my own tragic sitcom. There sat Emily, the woman who'd once been my everything and then my greatest heartbreak. And Ava, the woman who'd healed me, was now a puzzle wrapped in a mystery. The uncertainty hung in the air like the suspenseful end of a season finale. And I was left dangling on the edge, grappling with a question. What comes next? What shocking revelation waits around the corner? I found myself stumbling into a new role. Betrayed husband. Jilted lover. Surprised father. Yearning for a commercial break to catch my breath. The doorbell rang, marking another twist in the plot. There stood Ryan, suddenly reappearing in our living room like a ghost from the past. My blood ran cold as Ava, sipping her coffee, didn't even bat an eyelid. I want to make things right, Jake, Ryan began, his words scripted like an insincere apology at a press conference. It was as believable as a supervillain's sudden redemption arc. Too contrived, too hollow. But the real blow was Ava, the woman who shared my bed, my secrets, and now, it seemed, my past. Ava, who knew about Ryan before I had a clue. Suddenly... I felt like I was drowning in a sea of absurdity and confusion. As Ava and Ryan engaged in hushed whispers, their intimacy felt jarring, uncomfortable. The shared glances and the unspoken understanding between them, it felt like they existed in a separate bubble, and I was the intruder. Frustration and curiosity gnawing at me, I cornered Ava. What's happening between you and Ryan? Her surprise was evident, but her response was swift and unconvincing. Jake, you're overthinking. Remember... I'm just his therapist. Was I overthinking? Or was I finally awaking to a reality that I'd been too naive to notice? In the aftermath of Ryan's sudden return, our household became a whirlpool of hushed whispers and glances. The tension was thicker than the fog on a frosty morning, smothering all trust that had once flourished. Despite the impending storm, I could sense the end approaching, like the final chapters of a gripping novel. But who would flip the last page, and what revelations awaited? In this whirlwind, I was juggling my booming business, trying to rekindle my relationship with Ava, all while grappling with the turmoil that Ryan's return had stirred. Our lives were steeped in luxury. Shiny cars, priceless art, gourmet meals every night that made every day feel like a culinary adventure. Yet an unease, as chilling as a ghost whisper, seeped into my bones. One evening, Ava's words fell like a hammer. Ryan has potential, Jake. He could be an asset to our business. 
The domestic warmth of our living room was replaced by the cool, sterile tone of a corporate bedroom. Her suggestion was not just life-altering, it was earth-shattering. Despite my initial hesitation, I agreed. Ryan became a part of our enterprise, turning us into an unlikely duo in the sitcom of life. The only difference was, this was not just a series streaming on Netflix. This was a reality unscripted and unpredictable. Yet the more we tried to untangle this web of familial complexities, the tighter the knots became, the maid's secretive looks, the cook's quiet whispers, and the driver's unexplained absences, they were all fuel for my growing paranoia. I felt like a detective in my own house, trying to unravel a mystery that I wasn't ready to face. The more the drama unfolded, the more I wondered, what's the next twist in this bewildering narrative? One night, the fear of deception gnawed at me. I confronted Ava, masking my apprehension with humor. Are you and Ryan plotting a House of Cards-style coup? Ava just chuckled, her laughter an echo of our past intimacy. You've been binge-watching too much, babe, she said, dismissing my fears with a playful wink that was supposed to be reassuring. It wasn't. The roller coaster ride continued. However, Lily, the innocent caught in our crossfire, became the glue that bound us. Ryan, the prodigal father, was granted supervised access. It was far from conventional, but it worked. We were far from flawless. We fell, dusted ourselves off, stumbled, and got back up again. It was a never-ending loop of mistakes and learning, of hurt and healing. We were not characters in a high-octane drama. We were just a family, beautifully flawed, yet fiercely resilient. With each passing day, I realized we were more than just pawns in a twisted game. We were real, with our share of imperfections and blunders. And yet, it was in our flaws that we found our strength. It was our struggles that forged our bond, a testament to the resilience of unconventional families, the healing power of forgiveness. In the midst of swirling chaos, we discovered our ability to navigate the choppy seas of betrayal and trust, revenge and forgiveness. We redefined what family meant to us, every stumble, every rise. We learned to live, not just exist. So, this is it, I asked Ava one day, our eyes locked in a gaze that seemed to transcend time. Is this... Our endgame? Jake, she smiled, her eyes sparkling with unshed tears. This is just the beginning.